Welcome back everyone. Right, today I'm going to do roast shoulder of pork. And I've got a beautiful bit of British pork there, shoulder. It's about 1.8 kilos. I've got some Maris Piper potatoes. That's about just over a kilo, 1.2 or something. I've got 500 grams of beautiful Brussels sprouts. And I've got 500 grams of stringless beans. I've got a large Bramley apple, because we're going to make our own apple sauce today. I've got some butter, real butter, not spreadable. Uh, we're going to use about 150 grams of that. I've got some sea salt, olive oil, and I'm going to knock up some gravy using the granules just quicker. So, uh, yeah, I've got my oven preheated to about 200. When my pork goes in, I'm going to turn that right down to about 130. And we're going to slow cook this pork for around four hours. So let's get started. So first of all, I'm gonna drizzle a bit of olive oil over the top of our pork. And I'm just gonna wipe that all over. It helps to get it started and it helps the salt to uh, stick on there. And then we're gonna go plenty of sea salt on this. Make sure your pork skin is scored. Should be done by the, the butcher already. If it's not, you've got to use a sharp knife and put some scores into the uh, skin there. I'm going to get plenty of um, sea salt on this. A lot of it will probably fall off during the cooking anyway, but it gets it nice and crispy. Right, now, as I said, I've got the oven on 200. Pork's gone in. I'm going to get that down to 130. And we're going to cook that for about four hours. In the meantime, I'm going to prepare my apple sauce and let that cool to go in the fridge. So, the meat's been in the oven for about half an hour. It's still got a long way to go, so there's no need to rush anything. I'm going to get on with my apple sauce. So I'm going to start peeling my large Bramley apple. This is much nicer than the apple sauce you buy in the jar. It's got all preservatives in it and, and it's way too sweet. splash of water in there and you want to be pretty quick with this because if you leave the apple too long it starts to go brown and you know oxidize so we're going to get into four quarters there take the core out use any technique that you want I'll just do that Cut it down the middle, cut it into slices. In the water. Just don't hang about, just get it done. I'm just going to carry on getting these into the water. So that's all our apple in the saucepan there. It's bubbling away nicely. I've got it on a medium, medium heat. And you want to keep this gently bubbling away for about five minutes until your apple softens. If it gets too dry, add another little splash of water if it starts to stick. But um, mine's going to be okay. A lot of this water will absorb. So just about five minutes until it softens right up. So that's at about five minutes. As you can see, it is now the consistency of apple sauce. There's a few. You can add some um, sugar if you want it a bit sweeter, but I like to keep it as it is. I like it a little bit tart. It takes away the richness of the pork. You can um, use a potato masher if you want to get rid of the teeny little bits, lumps. But, you know, that's fine. You want to have a few little bits in there and a bit of texture. So that is done. I'm now going to pour it into a bowl. 
and we're going to let that cool down completely before we put it in the fridge to chill. We've still got about three hours before the meat's cooked, so that's that. So now I'm going to start preparing my potatoes. So these are Maris Pipers. I've got just over a kilo here. Um, this meal is going to serve four people. So that's enough, I think. So I'm going to get pooey potatoes and some are smaller than this one, so I'm going to cut them, cut that one into three. I've got some cold water in the saucepan there. Just try and get all your potatoes cut to a even-ish size so that they cook evenly. These are only going to take 20 minutes to boil and then we'll dry them and mash them, but we've got plenty of time yet. That's going to be right at the end when the meat is resting. So I'm just going to carry on peeling those. Right. So that's my potatoes, all peeled and cut into equal sort of sizes, near enough. Um, I've rinsed them for a, a few times with cold water and now make sure they're completely covered in cold water and then I'm just going to put those to one side until I'm ready to cook them. Now next I'm going to get my um, stringless beans done. So basically cut the little stalk off the end, you don't want that. And then you want to cut them into diamond shapes. So at an angle like that. Just like that. So that's the sort of shape you want. You can use any vegetables you want. I, I fancy these. So yeah, I'm going with these today. So just carry on cutting them up like that. So there are our stringless beans, all cut up, beautiful. I do personally prefer runner beans, but they were just sort of going out of season, so I got stringless beans, they're still lovely. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna soak them in cold water, give them a good clean. So give them a good soaking for about half an hour and then we'll give them a good rinse and then they're ready to cook. But we won't need them for a while yet. Um, next I'm gonna do my sprouts. Now, these are pretty clean. So all I'm gonna do is take that end off. If there's any dirty leaves, you know, you can just take those off. These are pretty clean, so there's not much to do with those. I'm just gonna do that. So take that off. They're pretty good. So not much to do there. I'm just gonna carry on with that and then put those in soak. So then we have our sprouts slightly trimmed up. That took no time at all. I'm gonna do the same with those. I'm gonna leave them soaking for about half an hour in cold water. And then give them a good rinse. So we'll just leave those on there for now. So that's my potatoes and my vegetables all done. Uh, the meat is cooking away in the oven. Still got about two and a half hours left. My apple sauce is done. That is still warm, so that's not quite ready to go in the fridge yet, but won't be too long. So yeah, just to kick back now and uh, wait, wait for the meat to just cook in the oven. Okay, right, our pork has had a good four hours in the oven. Lovely. Look at that. Got a nice bit of crackling on top. That's slow cooked on a low heat. Four hours. So what we're going to do before we do anything, I'm going to drain off some of the fat, not the juices, just the oil. In there. Get rid of that. And now I'm going to cover it over with some tin foil while I do my potatoes. And that can rest for 20 minutes. So, my vegetables have been drained and rinsed. My potatoes, I've just drained those off. I'm going to go in with a couple of 
pinch of sea salt. I've got a kettle full of boiling water here. Get a high heat underneath that. Make sure they're nicely covered. Now I'm going to bring that to the boil and I'm going to cook those potatoes on medium heat for about 20 minutes until they're soft enough a knife goes through them you know when they're done so I'm just going to get on with that 20 minutes so my potatoes are cooking away nicely they've got about another 10 minutes to go just bubbling away I've removed my crackling from my pork as you can hear that is beautiful so I've removed some of the fat that was underneath the crackling and I'm just going to start carving this up basically Beautiful slices of pork, nicely slow cooked pork, crispy on the outside. What I'm going to do, I'm going to carve this up and I'm going to put it back into the tin that it was cooked in and let it pick up all those meat juices that are stuck to the bottom. So I'm going to carry on carving that. So there's my meat all carved up. I've rolled it around in the juices a little bit. I'm going to cover that with foil and I'm going to just stick that back in the oven just on 180 for about five or ten minutes while I drain my potatoes and dry them off and mash them and then I shall take the meat back out rest it a little bit more it's just to help pick up all the flavors off the tin it caused some steam in there and it will help drag all those flavors off the tin so my potatoes are coming out in two minutes, they're almost there, so then I'll be drying them off. So, my potatoes have been drying off on the low heat for about five minutes. As you can see, they've gone all fluffy, there's no water left in there at all, and they're nice and fluffy. Some of them have broken up, it doesn't matter, because they're getting mashed up. Anymore. So, here's my 150 grams of butter, that is very soft, that's been out at room temperature. In it goes. Now if you're on a diet, you might want to use a bit less. But I'm not on a diet, so I like it nice and buttery. I'm not going to add any milk, because I think it makes it a bit too sloppy. So just butter. The potatoes were salted before they were boiled, so no need to add any salt. Just the butter. Give them a good mash. You can use a potato ricer if you want. I'm just using the old-fashioned masher. And just once they're done, that's it. Leave them alone. Don't overwork them. So they're basically there. Now I'm going to concentrate on my vegetables. I've just boiled the kettle. I'm going to put my sprouts on first. Bring them to the boil. Now they're quite big sprouts. They're quite large ones, so I'm going to probably cook them for about six or seven minutes. In the meantime, I should boil up another kettle for my uh, stringless beans. So, what I should do, I've got my mashed potatoes, I should put the lid on those. To keep them warm. And they will sit there. The meat, I'm going to give it a couple more minutes, take it out, that can just sit there covered with foil, that's ready to plate up. So it's just the sprouts and the stringless beans. I'm going to boil some more water for my beans. Okay, my sprouts have had a couple of minutes, they're in for another five minutes. Let's get the heat, start bringing these to the boil. I'll put a little pinch of sea salt in both of the vegetables, not too much, just one pinch. So by the time these come to the boil, the sprouts will be almost done. And I should be using the vegetable water from either of these to make my gravy. I'm going to take my meat back out of the oven now. I'm going to leave that covered until my vegetables are done and I'm ready to plate up. So it's just a matter of waiting for my sprouts and my stringless beans to cook. And then they'll be ready. Right, 
my sprouts are done. They've had about six and a half minutes. I'm going to use the water in those. Make my gravy. So it's like a green tinge to it. So it's got the vitamins in there. My um, stringless beans have started cooking. They're going to be on for about another four minutes. I'll give them five minutes altogether. As you can see, they're bubbling away nicely. So they're going to be about another four minutes, five minutes in total. We're going to cook those. Just let them bubble away. And then I'll be plating up. So there you have it. Okay, my mashed potatoes are still hot. My sprouts, I chucked a knob of butter in there. Give a nice bit of flavour and a nice gloss. My string of beans are done. My meat's been sitting there covered up. That's nice and tender. Um, last but not least, let's cut some of this. Oh, listen to that crunch. There we go. Let me try a bit. Mmm, unbelievable. Absolutely beautiful. Right. I'm now going to plate up and there we have it beautiful roast shoulder of pork nice buttery fluffy mashed potato stringless beans cooked to perfection buttered sprouts let's get a bit of gravy on there absolutely perfect and last but not least Let's not forget these babies. A bit of crackling. And also, before I forget, our homemade apple sauce that's nice and chilled from the fridge. And I'll be serving this with a nice buttery chardonnay even more butter you see we love it ice cold buttery chardonnay with beautiful roast shoulder of pork and also better than that enjoy don't forget to subscribe see you on the next one